Ready? Oh, hey guys, uh, what's up? Um, I just wanted to show you how I built this super modern uh, window casing and trim. Uh, roll the intro! Hey, what's up everyone? Nick here from Rad Dad Builds. So yeah, like I said in my super awkward introduction there, I wanna show you how I built this modern, seamless window casing and trim. I basically started off by using my moldy tool and making a couple of cuts in the original casing. And then I just got a flat bar and just pried it all out. I mean, if you don't have a moldy tool, it's fine. You can pretty much use whatever to smash that thing out. Using a roofing square, I checked to see how badly out of square the original window opening was. And to my surprise, it was actually pretty good. So then I took all my measurements of the height and the width of the window opening. And then I also took a measurement of the distance from the front of the window to the front of the drywall. For the actual casing, I'm cutting it out of a sheet of three quarter inch MDF that I had kicking around. I basically cut four strips at five and a quarter inches. Once I cut all my four strips to width, I cut the top and the bottom piece to length. I minus a quarter of an inch off each measurement, that way I can allow for wiggle room and I can also make it level if it's slightly out. To hold the casing together, I'm going to be using a rabbit joint, which is essentially you cut out a little seat for the uprights to sit in. I'll show you in more detail coming up. I made a mark three quarters of an inch off each end of the top and the bottom piece. This is where I'm going to cut the seat for the uprights. Can you see that? I got to cut that out. And there. I cut the rabbit joints out with my miter saw. I mean, you can use your table saw or like a circular saw with a guide, but my miter saw has those cool little adjustable depth stops, so I just use that. I made a mark at half of the thickness of the material that I'm using, and then I just adjusted the little depth stop thing until my teeth of the blade just skim that mark. I use a little spacer block to space off my material away from my fence. That way the curvature of the blade will consistently cut through the piece. And then my first cut, I just skimmed my mark and then worked back from there, removing as much material as I possibly can. I continue these steps on both pieces. I then removed any excess and marks with a chisel. I marked out my uprights, bearing in mind I wanted to take a quarter of an inch off the wiggle room and three quarters of an inch off to allow for the rebate. I then cut them to length. I gave all the edges a small round over using my quarter inch router. And then I gave all faces a sand of 150 grit, and then all ends I gave a sand to 400 grit.
To attach all my pieces together, I use wood glue and my pin gun, but you can use wood glue and screws and a countersink if you like. I just don't really like screwing into MDF that much. For ease, I adjusted my combination square to a quarter of an inch, but for this next step, you could just use a tape measure. I made a mark at quarter of an inch around the whole inside edge of the casing. This is basically a reference mark for your trim. I measured from mark to mark on opposite ends of the casing. All going well, these measurements should be exactly the same. I then transferred those marks to my trim pieces that I purchased from my local Home Depot and then began to cut my 45 degree angles at those marks. Once I'd cut my top and bottom trim pieces, I attached them to my casing using my pin gun and wood glue, following the quarter of an inch guide marks that I made. Once those trim pieces were attached, for ease, I measured from outside to outside of those trim pieces. I went and cut the remaining two pieces of trim and then I attached them the same way, using glue and my pin gun, making sure that I glued the miters. I made sure the whole thing was sitting nice and square and then I clamped all four of the corners and then let the glue dry overnight. The next day on the back of the window casing I put a couple of blobs of construction adhesive and then just slipped the whole thing in place. On a side note, try not to take out any taps or any household items in the process. Um, yeah. I gave it a little tap and a wiggle and it just slipped in perfectly.
I then double checked it for plumb and level and then using my pin gun, I pinned it in place, pinning it to the existing window opening. I went ahead and filled all the holes left behind from my pin gun and then yeah, pretty much done. I'm not gonna show you me painting cause that would suck, but you will notice a few other things that progress in this kitchen, like the kitchen tiles and the trim on the cabinets, which will be coming in later videos. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe and follow along. And yeah, stay rad.